Hello everyone and welcome to Linux Bits. Today I'll cover a general overview of Valve's Proton compatibility layer utilized by Steam Play. I'll cover the simple and quick steps to play games from the Steam client, and also some command line syntax for running Proton manually. I'll also throw in some useful tweaks to get some picky games working. Proton is a compatibility layer for Linux systems based on Wine. It includes specific tweaks and enhancements to standard Wine to make gaming a smoother experience, such as always avoiding mode setting and defaulting to a composited borderless full screen window instead. This avoids older games changing your desktop to an absurdly low resolution like 640x480. When run through Steam, it also utilizes Steam's unique and useful controller API. The most important feature is the inclusion of DXUK, an open source re-implementation of the Direct3D11 API which translates D3D11 calls into Vulkan calls in real time. This is often very successful and with a pretty low performance cost. DXVK also includes D3D10 support. Proton currently utilizes regular Wine D3D for Direct3D9 in earlier games. The first step is to enable the Steam Play functionality itself from within the Steam client. The first thing we'll want to do is go up to the top left and click the Steam tab, then go to Settings. Scroll down to Steam Play and select Enable Steam Play for supported titles and Enable Steam Play for all other titles. We'll want to use Proton 3.16-7 as that is the latest beta release as of recording. It's worth noting you may have to participate in the latest Steam client beta in order to access these beta builds of Proton. At this point you can try running some games. You can add some third party ones with the add non-steam game option or use the command line as shown here. Here's me pressing play on my Steam version of GTA 3. With the exception of mod support which I fixed myself and I'll show you how to do later, the game just worked. If you only want to use Steam Play through the Steam Client, the rest of these steps may not be for you. I'll demonstrate now how to run Proton through the command line. One thing I should mention is that I was never able to get controller support working when running Proton games through the terminal. Just keep this in mind. If you didn't install a game through Steam, you'll still need to download Proton following these steps. Go to your library section in Steam and then go to Tools. Find the latest version of Proton and then install it. Once you've finished installing the latest version of Proton, it will be written to your Steam directory at Steam Apps, Common, Proton 3.16, or whatever its version when you're following this video. To get started with running Proton through the command line, one of the first things you'll need to do is decide where your Proton data directory needs to be. For this video, I chose home slash Proton slash Proton 1 for my compatibility data directory. You can choose whatever you like, but you have to make sure you've created the folder first, or else Proton will give you an error. Having created the Proton directory, it's time to find our non-Steam game and get it running. To run a game through Proton in the command line, we need to first set our compatibility data directory, which we just created. Then, we need to find the Python script named Proton in the Proton directory, and then give it the run command. After that, we need to specify our exe, and then run it. It's important that the terminal be in the same working directory as the executable itself, or else Proton won't work properly and all sorts of strange and unpredictable things can happen. And just like that, I'm running a non-Steam version of an old build of Half-Life 2 called the Collector's Edition. You can run Proton from the command line like this anytime you want to run any of your non-Steam games, as long as they work under Proton, of course.
said they had become like these peculiar demons which dwell in matter, but in whom no light may be found. Well, that's been the Proton Command Line basics. So far I've told you how to run a game, but now I think I need to tell you how to tweak it. Let's start with Wine CFG. Wine CFG is the main control panel for Wine, and you'll need to access it now and again to fix some issues in certain games. The first thing we need to do is select the Wine prefix rather than the Proton data directory and then specify the PFX folder where the actual WINE files are located, and then call WINE ZFG. From this menu, you can enable all sorts of things like virtual desktops if you're having trouble with the full screen mode, or features like automatically capturing the mouse cursor in any given window if you're having issues with the game capturing your mouse cursor. By far, one of the most useful features in this menu is in the Libraries tab where you can override DLLs. Some games require DLL injection to be able to function in the first place, while others require it for mods like Skyrim or Grand Theft Auto 3. You can create overrides for these DLLs, however, and force it to use the local ones, and sometimes this will work, sometimes it will not. Near Automata is a good example of it not working. If you try to use the FAR mod, it won't work because it conflicts with DXVK. A good example of working perfectly, that would be Grand Theft Auto 3. You can simply specify the DLL you need to override to load the ASI loader and everything will work as expected. Beyond that, another useful utility you might need to use is Wine Tricks. You can use this to install things like the Microsoft Core fonts in cases where fonts might be missing in games. Wine Tricks has both a command line and GUI interface. The GUI interface is demonstrated here, however I vastly prefer the command line as you may have guessed. Between Wine CFG and Wine Tricks, there isn't much stopping you from playing most of your favorite games at this point. If they have a problem, you might be able to solve it this way, but you might not. Some games just don't work right now. Do note that anything that requires you to specify the Wine prefix, it's usually very important to specify the slash PFX slash at the end of the command, as that is where the Wine prefix is technically located, and you need to keep that in mind when you're doing this. After we're finished taking our look around Wine Tricks, I'll begin showing you some game-specific tricks that may be applicable elsewhere. First, we'll cover Grand Theft Auto 3 and its mod support. As mentioned earlier, GTA 3 on its own works perfectly, but let's cover the Ultimate ASI Loader, which I use for common mods. Since we're using Wine CFG again, we need to set our Wine prefix. I'm using the default Steam path here, but if you specified your own, it's your job to remember it. Once we've opened Wine CFG, it's time to set our DLL overrides. But I sometimes make an application profile first in case I use this Wine prefix with anything else. In my case, the mods I'm using are SkyGFX and Ultimate AS High Loader. These need D3D8 and dinput8.dll injected accordingly. Windows does this automatically, but Wine supplies these libraries itself and thusly requires an override. Once we're finished, we can launch the game. And now your GTA 3 with any mods you desire should be working as you desire. This is a version of GTA 3 I tailored to be as close to the PS2 version as possible, pre-9-11 too. This is Hit Radio Look. Let's move on to Manhunt next. This one requires a manual tweak using the Wines regedit in order to get the mouse working properly. Without this fix, the game is fundamentally broken. Trying to turn around will result in your mouse cursor hitting the edge of your screen, not allowing you to turn any further.
To fix this problem, we'll set the wine prefix and use regedit to make some changes. Once we're in regedit, we'll need to go to H key current user, software, wine, and then create a new key called direct input. Then within that key, make a new string value called mouse warp override. And set the data to force. And that's all that needs to be done to fix the manhunt mouse issue. This should work for other games experiencing similar issues, so make sure to try it there too. Setting up Manhunt itself is a bit of a process as well, so if you're looking for a guide on that, I just recommend you check the Steam forums. The game will not run out of the box very well at all once you buy it off Steam. You'll need to make some changes. All in all, I think that's all this video needs to cover. Be sure to check ProtonDB.com if you're struggling with a certain game or want to check how a game performs or if it even works at all. Thank you very much for watching, and stay tuned for more Linux Bits.